or Sejal Sinha Battle Superstorm. It's about a young Indian American girl named Sejal with a big imagination. She can turn her cardboard box into anything. On the night of our family's Diwali celebration, there's a hurricane warning on the news. Sejal is worried that the hurricane might ruin their holiday, so she turns her cardboard box into a hurricane hunting aircraft. With her cousin Mira and her best stuffy friend, Professor Cheetah, she flies into the hurricane to learn about how it works, what powers it, and how she can possibly stop it. Today, I'm excited to read a few chapters with you. Cardboard boxes have a lot of magic that grown-ups just don't get. They can turn into anything and take you anywhere. Need a submarine to go to the bottom of the sea? Need a machine to dig to the center of the earth? Need a train to take you deep into a mine filled with crystals? A cardboard box can do the job. Another successful mission, I said, as we landed back on the shaggy rug in my family's basement. Excellent work. I can't wait to examine my moon samples, Professor Cheetah said, giving me a high five. She was the smartest of all my stuffed animals and my best stuffy friend. She'd been my co-pilot on our cardboard box trip to the moon, and now she hopped out of the box and took the samples to her laboratory, also known as the toy shop. Just then, I heard the doorbell ring upstairs. As she always did, my puppy started barking super ferociously. You couldn't tell she only weighed five pounds because she sounded way bigger. Oof, said Professor Cheetah. This fluff monster need to be so loud. I'm trying to concentrate. Professor Cheetah took science very seriously. I liked learning how things worked, but mostly went on the mission for the adventure. Right now, though, I was excited to be back home because today was Diwali, my favorite Indian holiday, all about light winning over darkness. We dress up in fancy clothes and make pretty designs with colored sand out on the porch. We light up the house with candles, play with sparklers in the backyard, and eat a huge yummy feast with plenty of sweets for dessert too. Plus, my aunt, uncle, and cousin Mira were coming to celebrate with us. I couldn't wait. Just one problem. I had to clean up the basement even though mom had told me to. Oops. I started picking up the pieces of my little brother Abu's train set since he was helping dad with dinner, which probably meant making dinosaur sculptures with puri dough. That sounded more fun than cleaning, but when I had complained, mom gave me that squinty look she got when she was annoyed. The one that meant she might give me some math problems to do. Mom loved assigning extra homework. She thought our teachers didn't give enough. I hadn't got much picked up before the basement door opened. My cousin Mira came down the steps, my cookies and cream colored pup following excitedly behind her. Hi, Sajel, Mira said. Hi, Mira. I dropped the train track piece I was holding and ran to give her a hug. She hugged me back, but then peeked over at my spaceship. Don't tell me you're still playing with cardboard boxes. Oof, Sajel is very hurt. Next, the power goes out in the house because of the incoming storm. Sejal and Mira try to do some of their favorite Diwali activities, but the storm outside kind of ruins it. And Sejal's really upset. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to the part where Sejal decides to turn to her trusty cardboard box. Chapter 7, Time for Cardboard Box Magic. While the grown-ups kept talking, I slipped out and hurried down to the basement with my flashlight. Even if there was only a small chance that Hurricane Ruin Everything would turn into a superstorm, this was still a total disaster of a Diwali. I needed my stuffy. Professor Cheetah was on the shelf where I left her. I picked her up and gave her a hug, letting my tears fall. I'd had her since my second birthday, and she'd always been there for me when anything went wrong. The hurricane is ruining everything, I wailed. No Rangoli, no sparklers, no power in the house. Diwali is the only thing that Mira was excited about doing with me, and now we can't even celebrate it. So obviously, we should stop the hurricane, Professor Cheetah replied. She flicked her tail bossily. One thing about Professor Cheetah, she could be kind of a know-it-all. But right now, I wanted her advice. How, I asked. She pointed at the cardboard box. We'll turn our spaceship into a hurricane hunting air aircraft. I thought about it. That sounds dangerous and um, sort of fun. Professor Cheetah grinned her big cheetah grin. It was a little scary, honestly, very toothy, but that was how she always looked when she had a big idea. We got to work changing the cardboard box spaceship into a hurricane hunting airplane. I put on new stickers for the plane's control panel. We didn't need rocket parts anymore since we weren't going to outer space. Instead, I put a more regular looking speedometer to tell us how fast we were going. 
I added some other buttons and knobs we would need for steering the plane, and I named our new aircraft with red marker, the SS Cheetah. Are we ready, I asked. Before Professor Cheetah could answer, Abu came running into the basement with his backpack. I could see a bunch of string cheese packets poking out of the side pockets. I need a pack! I need a pack! He yelled, waving his hands frantically. What should I bring to evacuate? Were you listening to anything Mom and Sheila Mossy were saying, I asked. It's only a maybe. You don't need to pack. Yes, I do! Abu ran to a bunch of toys and put them in his overstuffed backpack. The, ba the door to the basement opened and shut again. Mira came shuffling down with her flashlight. Playing with a cardboard box again, she asked, folding her arms. It was time to remind Mira all about the magical kid power she'd forgotten. I climbed into the cardboard box with Professor Cheetah and put on my goggles. They were for swimming, but I was sure they'd help out in windy, stormy weather, too. We're going on an adventure, I said. Want to come? Chapter 8, The Green Triangle of Power. Before Mira could answer, the room started to shake. The basement ceiling split wide open, and when I looked up, I didn't see the rest of this, the house. There was only a big gray sky. Plenty of wind and rain, too. It was time to press the most important button, a very special green triangle sticker on the control panel. It was a button that took the power of imagination and changed that energy into something amazing. I carefully pushed it. And presto! The cardboard box expanded into a real airplane. I leaned out of the pilot seat to look down the side where SS Cheetah was still written in big red letters. Professor Cheetah leaned over from the co-pilot seat. She grinned her toothy cheetah grin. Hello, Mira. Hi, Professor Cheetah. Mira waved back weakly. She seemed in shock. Mira's eyes were big and round. This must be a dream. Maybe I hit my head in the dark. That's the only explanation. We used to do this all the time, remember, I said. She bit her lip. But we were just pretending. No, we weren't, I said. It was always real. You just forgot about cardboard box magic. Hey, away from me! Abu pushed past Mira with his heavy backpack. Don't worry, I packed everything we need. He pulled out a tin and offered me a warm pecora. Yum! Okay, maybe all the packing wasn't completely useless. Right beside him, Fluff Monster barked and wagged her tail. She put her paws up on the side of the plane. This is too dangerous for you, Fluff, I said. She let out a low growl to show she wasn't scared. Her tail wagged faster than the winds of a hurricane. Okay, okay, hop in, I said. Fluff Monster was little, but she backed up, got a running start through Mira's leg, and jumped right into my lap. Good girl, I scratched her ears. Mira, what about you? I don't know. Mira looked nervously at the plane. Come on, who cares if this is a dream, I said, even though it definitely wasn't. It's still more fun than staying here, right? I guess so. Mira slowly climbed into the back seat, shivering in the wind and rain. I threw her a jacket and a pair of swim goggles. Abu had his own pair that he found in his backpack. He even had a doggy pair for Fluff Monster. Once we were all ready for tough weather, I pushed the green triangle button again, and the plane took off, zooming into the big gray clouds. Thanks so much for reading along with me. For more videos like this, subscribe to Simon Kids' YouTube channel and check back often. Have a wonderful day!